When someone has cancer, doctors might prescribe radiotherapy as a way of treating it. Radiotherapy means using x-rays to try to destroy the cancer tumour while sparing as much healthy tissue as possible. It's often used alongside chemotherapy, which uses chemicals to shrink or break down tumours. Hi, I'm Amy Elliott and I'm a radiation physicist. I work here at the University of Oxford Department of Oncology on finding ways to design more accurate and more effective radiation treatments for cancer patients. Radiation is a form of energy that comes in small packets called photons. The light we can see is also a type of radiation. However, a photon of visible light has an energy much, much lower than the type of radiation we use for cancer treatment. The radiation we use exists beyond the ultraviolet frequency. This means the radiation is too high a frequency for human eyes to see. When an X-ray photon passes through a cell, it has a chance to damage the DNA that the cell needs in order to survive. When this happens, the cell is in a race against time to repair the damage before the damage kills the cell. The cancer cells are less able to fix DNA damage than healthy cells, which gives us a chance to use X-rays to destroy the tumour without doing lots of damage to healthy tissue. All this talk of x-rays causing damage might sound scary given the history of other types of radiation, for example Chernobyl and Fukushima. But our x-rays are generated by a machine called a linear accelerator, or a LINAC for short. The LINAC is the machine that generates the photons. If we turn off the power, the machine stops and the x-rays stop. Nothing is left radioactive, not the room, not the patient, and not the staff. The radiation can be harmful, but our Linux generate only what we need when we need it. We can aim and shape the beam to help us target the tumour. However, we still want to limit the damage to healthy cells as much as possible. Early in the history of radiation treatment, scientists realised that attacking cancer tumours with one concentrated beam of x-rays was effective. The problem was that since the photons didn't know the difference between cancer cells and healthy cells, they still caused lots of damage to the parts of the body that got in between the tumour and the beam. This made cancer treatments unpleasant for patients, and it took people a long time to recover from them. To demonstrate this as clearly as possible, let's use a computer mouse. The inside of this computer mouse is a lot simpler than the inside of an animal or a person, which makes it easier for us to see what the radiation is doing. Let's imagine that our tumour is located here and we know that we will need a certain amount of radiation to attack it. Let's try treating the tumour with just one beam of radiation. The radiation starts out very powerful, and as it travels through the mouse, it gets weaker as the photons are absorbed by the tissue. The red areas show where the dose of radiation is greatest, causing the highest level of tissue damage. And here, that's in the part of the mouse which doesn't have any tumours at all. By the time it reaches the tumour, the radiation is still doing some good, but it is much weaker than when it first came into the body, and it's done a lot of damage along the way. It could also cause some damage on the other side of the tumour, as it passes through the body and out the other side. Let's try it with two beams instead of one. We can use a dimmer to turn the power down a little. We want to make sure that these two beams are delivering the same amount of radiation as the one big beam we just saw. As you can see, there's more radiation reaching the tumour itself, and less tissue damage on the way in. But maybe we can do even better. When we use three beams, each individual beam can be much lower in power, because now the tumour is getting hit from three angles instead of two. The same amount of energy is still going into the tumour, but now there are no red areas, meaning there is less tissue damage to the outside of the body. There's still the potential for some damage to cells around the tumour site though. What happens if we use five beams? This reduces the dose around the tumour site, while still keeping the same level of damage to the cancer cells themselves. But because beam number five has to travel quite a long way through the body compared to the other four beams, it needs to be higher in intensity. This means we have another potential hotspot where damage to healthy tissue could occur. But if we use seven beams, no individual beam needs to be very powerful, because all seven converge or come together on the same spot. 
They're still doing the same job as one very powerful beam, but we've reduced the healthy tissue damage by a large amount. Of course, the insides of people are a lot more complicated than the insides of a computer mouse. But doctors can now take very precise measurements using techniques like CT and MRI scans, which help them target the cancer cells they need to attack, while avoiding as much healthy tissue as possible. There are also other ways for people to take radiotherapy, like being prescribed radioactive medicine, or even radioactive implants that deliver very precise doses of radiation inside the body. Researchers are also working on proton therapy, which is a special type of radiotherapy that uses protons instead of photons. Because protons are tiny particles rather than light, they can be engineered to stop completely when they reach their target, rather than continuing through the body which is especially useful if the tumour is near vital organs like the brain. But there are some downsides too. Proton therapy is a lot more expensive, which means fewer people can access it. Also, because the beam stops exactly where the doctors plan it to, if the tumour moves even a little bit during the treatment, there's a chance that some of it might be missed and the cancer could grow back. My work involves studying how cancer cells react to radiation. I experiment with the amount of radiation, the time it takes to deliver this radiation, and the way the radiation and cancer drugs can work together. All this sounds like exciting medical research, so most people are surprised to learn I'm not a biologist, but a physicist. I can do my job because I have a degree in physics that taught me how radiation works. Physicists are vital in researching cancer treatments and new ways of imaging tumours. Check out the links below if you would like to learn more.